Right. All right, it's, it's um, months uh, communion service um, will be done in a different way. It's called Lady My Heart. Um, the way I want to look at today's, uh, today's communion is essentially uh, praying from the place of victory. Praying from the place of victory. Um, when we go through certain challenges in life, um, it is possible during the time that we're going through these challenges for us to begin to doubt, is God still for me? Is God going to come through for me? Will he work or will he not work? And God is leading my heart to talk to you about um, the fact that God is our deliverer. God is our deliverer. So that is the word for the month. God is our deliverer. Now, when I say God is our deliverer, it means God delivers us, right, from every challenges that we may face or situations that we might find ourselves. And because God is our deliverer, we can look up to him. You know, one of the scriptures we're going to look at today talks about the fact that when we look up to him, we will not be put to shame. When we look up to him, our faces will glisten, which means the glory of God will brighten upon our faces. Now, looking up to God means that we are not trusting in what humans can do for us. It doesn't mean God cannot use humans. It means that we are not putting our trust in humans. I'll tell you a short story uh, before I go on. Many years ago, I think it was 2017, um, I had this, I got this role, it's an international role uh, that I had to travel a lot. It was a good role, it was a good role uh, to the glory of God. But when I, while I was preparing for that role, I had done um, step one um, and I was told, oh, I, I don't I need to be first with somebody and I was told to come in for the second stage. And I was there in this in, in my bedroom. Um, there's a scripture that God gave, which is um, the horses are prepared for the day of battle, but victory is of the Lord or deliverance is of the Lord. So um, there I was thinking about how am I going to prepare for this interview? They told me that they had a platform. I've never heard of their platform before. I've never heard of their methodology before the way they deliver their program. And I was told they were going to ask this question. So I didn't know what I was going to do. God gave me that scripture in Psalm 34. You know, that the horses are prepared for the days of battle. Yeah, but victory, sorry, Proverbs 21, verse 31. The Bible says a horse is prepared for a day of battle, but the deliverance is of Jehovah or victory is of the Lord. And God said to me, you, you, you prepare your, your horses, right? You have battle, you have a battle coming up. You do all the things you are doing, but victory is what comes from God. While I was there pondering on that and just thinking about what to do, God gave me, God gave me an idea to go and search some things out on Google. And as I was searching for the methodology on Google, I found a deck or a presentation that they had done before uh, to some other client on how they, where they were trying to explain how they delivered their project. So that's how I had an insight into what, into their, into their um, organization structure, how they do things in that company. And so when I went for the interview the next day, I was talking to their head of engineering. I basically was regurgitating what I learned about their slides. But you see, the night before, while I was spawning, God gave me that word that a horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victories of the Lord. In another translation, it says, a horse is prepared for a day of battle, but the deliverance is of Jehovah. The deliverance is of Jehovah. So what God is laid in my heart to, to this evening is to try and share with us that in this month, God wants you to be expectant. God wants you to know that he is going to come through for you as a deliverer. It does not mean you will sit down and not do anything. No, it just means that the victory that you are going to get in different areas of your life, in whatever you believe God for, will not just be by virtue of the hand of what you have done by yourself. In Psalm 146 verse 3, Psalm 146 verse 3, the Bible says, Trust not in princes, 
trust not in the son of man, for that person had no deliverance. The Bible essentially is saying we should not put our trust in the sons of men, the people that we know. As though I know so on and so no, God will bring you into some circles, so will bring you into some spaces. He alone will bring you there, all right? But God said, don't put your trust in the people that I'm going to, I'm going to bring you into their circle as, as them being the only one that can help you at all, as being the one that brought you there. But I that brought you there, we open doors for you, we make things work for you. So this is a word of wisdom to someone tonight that, you know, you are just on the cusp of a breakthrough in one area of your life. And God says, I am already surrounding you with the people that will help you. I'm already surrounding you with people that will lift up your hands. You know, the Bible talks about the story in the in the Bible talks about Moses when they were fighting the Amalekite. Joshua was in the field fighting the Amalekite. The Bible says Moses sat down on the hill and he lifted up his sword. And the Bible says that as long as the hands of Moses was up, Joshua prevailed in the field. You know, so to got a point, the hands of Moses began to be weak, which means every human help has its limitation. But there is a help that comes from God that does that, that has no limit. There is a help that comes from God that cannot be curtailed. There is a help that comes from God that has no limit. So what God then did for them in, in that story was the Bible said Moses sat down and there were two people that joined him. There was a guy called Hor on the one hand and Aaron on the other side. And they lifted up the two hands of Moses, you know, so that, you know, he, because he couldn't lift up his hands by himself. They, they basically supported his hands so that the rod of Moses can be lifted up on the, on the hill. And that enabled Joshua to prevail in the marketplace, in, in the field. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that every destiny helper that you need to lift up your hands in any area where you may be struggling, in any area where you need help. I pray for you that this month, God Almighty, we orchestrate your parts so that you can begin to come in contact with them. I pray for you that God will grant you speed in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that the victory that Christ won at Calvary's Hill uh, we, 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 we will be experienced by all of us in the name of Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Now, as we step into uh, the prayer, I'm going to be praying through Psalm 34. But I started this prayer in church um, yesterday morning in the, in the prayer meeting. And uh, I, I wanted to tell you the background to this, um, to this story, to this scripture, uh, Psalm 34. Let me bring up my, uh, give me one minute. Uh, so sharing. So in Psalm 34, uh, we understand that this uh, portion of scripture was written by uh, uh, David. <laughs> but David wrote this scripture at one of his the, one of the lowest period of his life. Just, just David had been again king to take off from Saul in Israel, but David. Um, experienced jealousy from Saul. Saul was running around to try and, you know, kill David. David was running from one place to the other. David started running into caves, hanging out in caves, and he became a vagabond, as it were. He was anointed to be king, but he was a vagabond. You know, he couldn't get, he couldn't lay his head anywhere, uh, you know, because of fear or obviously of being, of being killed by Saul. And then David, um, went into a particular city and it was identified uh, by the king of that place or the people of that place where they identified him. And when they identified him, they said, oh, is this not David the king? Or remember, he had not been, he, has not, he hadn't sat on the throne yet, but he was called David the king. He's not the one that the women are singing, uh, Saul, killed, Saul killed his thousands and David kills uh, his ten, tens of thousands, you know? And David realized that they have, they knew who he was and realized that his life was in danger. So David began to act like a mad person. He was scratching walls. He was allowing speech to come out of his mouth. He was just doing some crazy stuff. The king then said to, to them, I, why do you bring me a mad person? What do I need to have a mad person coming in my presence? Please send him out. So David was delivered in that process. And I kind of find it quite interesting because if you look in 
Psalm 34, right? Psalm 34, verse 4, the Bible says, listen, I'm reading from the Passion Translation, listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. David essentially is saying, God freed me from all my fears. I cried to God in my distress. If you are here this afternoon and there's something that is bothering you, it might be your health, it might be your career, it might be your story, it might be things that, that you know, you are, you, you're confused, you don't know what to do. God essentially is saying here, if you cry to God and say, Father, I need your help. God's help is always available to us. God is our deliverer. God is our deliverer. Now, as I look at this, I then found something that I want to share with you. I'm going to circle back to the beginning of the text first, but I want to show you something in verse 7. Let's see verse 7. Actually, verse 6. The Bible says, When I had nothing desperate and defeated, I had cried out to the Lord, and he heard me. I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me, bringing his miracle deliverance when I needed it most. He's saying God delivered him when he needed it most, when he was almost at the, uh, uh, you know, at the end of his fever, when he was at the end of all he could do, and he had nothing to do anymore. The Bible says it was it was God, actually, when I read this stuff, it was God who gave him the impression to start acting like a mad person so he could, he could, he could escape from that place. Because if we look in verse 7, the Bible says, the angel of Yahweh stood down to listen as I prayed, encircling me, empowering me, and showing me how to escape. So this tells us that it was when David was behaving crazy and scratching walls and acting like a mad person. It was the inspiration of the Holy Ghost for him to behave like that so that he could escape from the hand of the enemy. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that in this month, God's miraculous deliverance will come through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that even this month, as you pray, as you look up to God, you will carry a consciousness, you will become aware of his ever abiding presence, encircling you and empowering you and showing you the way of escape in whatever that you may find yourself, in whatever that you may need help from. The children of Israel were in, 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 Israel, were in Egypt for over 400 years. Truth be told, every one of them that got delivered by Moses that came out of that um of that of Egypt and they had to pass through the Red Sea, every one of them will have been born in slavery. I doubt if there's any one of them that was not born into slavery, which means all of their lives, all they knew was slavery, lack. They had some of these children had seen their parents, you know, uh, carry um and in, involved in, 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 in um in manual labor. Some of them may have seen their parents, you know, died of sickness, you know, they may have seen their parents, you know, being maltreated by other people. So they had this mentality of slavery wired into their brain. And God said, I have heard the groaning of my children. I am come to deliver them. But how did God deliver them? God sent Moses. So at times, the deliverance of God for you may come through people that you know, may come through people from your family, or you may come through uncommon quarters. But it doesn't matter anyway. What is important is that the Lord God who delivers is the one who is going to deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible said they came out with a mass, with, with, with mass um, produce. They had a lot of things that they came out with, things that they didn't work out for. When the deliverance of God came for the children of Israel, the, everything that they seemed to have lost, everything that they seemed to have uh, lost over the years, they regained in one day. I prophesy over someone this afternoon. I speak over your life and my life that the miracle of one day, the miracle of one day turnaround, is coming over your life and yours in the name of Jesus Christ. If, if, if at all you have been delayed, I pray for you that in this month, there will now be a separation. There will now be a difference as God will begin to lift you up and set you apart in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the children of Israel were going. They were close to the Red Sea. 
The Bible says that we could hear the hoofs of the horses of the of the of the soldiers of, of Pharaoh pounding the ground and coming behind them. They were scared. They didn't know what to do. And now we could hear the roaring of the ocean of the Red Sea in front of them. Now they are trapped. They are trapped where they were. Their backs were against the rock. They could hear the, the, in, the impending doom coming from the Egyptian armies. Now, and they could see in front of them, there's nowhere to go. You have, you could have been, you could have found yourself in a situation like that where you look at your left and you look at, at your right. It seemed like you're out of option. But I want you to know 100 represent you know God that you are never out of option because the God who delivers will come through for you he came through for the children of Israel the Bible said they took the rod of Moses they was lifted up and God parted the Red Sea God caused a strong wind to come and caused the sea to be parted it is possible for God to save for God to deliver for God to do things for you based using natural resources it is possible for God to help you using uncommon resources it is possible for God to use People that you even know to help you. So they crossed to the Red Sea and they went on the other side. And when the children of Egypt, uh, the, the Egyptians tried to follow them, they all drowned in the Red Sea. And then the Bible says that Miriam and Moses be, began to sing the song of deliverance. They began to sing song of deliverance. They began to say, Father, we thank you, Father, we give you praise. They have experienced the deliverance of the Lord. At the last minute, when it says that nothing was going to work, they experienced the deliverance of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in this month that God, our deliverer, is speaking to our hearts that if you are here, and the things have been delayed for you. There are things that you believe God that hasn't happened yet. That this month, the God who is our deliverer is working on your behalf. He is going to come through for you in the name of Jesus. So Psalm 34 says... Lord, I am boasting with joy over what you have done for me. My lips are full of perpetual praise. I am boasting of you and all of your works. So let all who are discouraged take heart. Those who are discouraged should take heart of what? That God is the deliverer. Because God, yeah, Apostle, King David was saying, I am boasting with joy over what you have done for me. One of the things that the Lord's been teaching me recently is that we should be thankful ahead for what we have not yet received. When you receive something from God, you throw a dance party, you are happy. But you could you take your faith to another level when you are thanking God ahead for what he has done, but you have not yet seen it. So when I call this prayer point, you know, as I step through this, I'm going to step through them, you know, I'm not going to go line by line, I'm just going to step through them because it's a lot to cover and I only have a lot left. You know, but I'll step through them and I'll call these prayers. But I want you to pray them from the fact that they have been done. So if you imagine that this year, you believe that God, maybe you, you need extra income for your business. Maybe you need breakthroughs in your study. Maybe you need, um, you know, a new job. Maybe you need healing for your body. Imagine if that has been done. If God, the deliverer, has already happened, made it happen for you. You had fast forward your time, your mind now to the end of this month and you have seen the miracle deliverance of the Lord. How will you feel? You will feel good. You will feel great. You will be boisterous and happy. God is saying, why don't you begin to thank God in advance for what he is yet to do in the physical, but he has already done in the realm of the spirit. So the first prayer point here is, Lord, Thank you, O Lord, that my mouth is filled with the praise of God. Father, I thank you that my mouth is filled with the praise of God for what you have done for me. Lord, I am so grateful, O God for what you have done for me. I'm so grateful for the for coming through for me. Thank you, almighty God, for what you have done in my life. Thank you, almighty God, for the things and miracles which you have wrought by your own hands. Thank you, almighty God, for what you have done. I thank you in advance, Father, for that which you have done for me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my lips are full of perpetual praise. My lips are full of perpetual praise. In the name of Jesus. Verse 2 says, I am boasting of you and all of your works. 
So let all who are discouraged take heart. I am boasting of you and of all of your works. Can you take a moment to just boast on the Lord? Just say, Father, I thank you for you are faithful. Father, I thank you because you are merciful. Father, I thank you because you are gracious. Father, I thank you because you are wonderful. Father, I thank you because you are beautiful. Father, I thank you because you are gracious. Lord, I lift up my hands with my brothers and I lift up my hands with my sisters. And I say, Father, thank you because you are faithful on all the time. Father, we thank you because our boast is in the name of the Lord. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, some make their boast in people that they know, but our boast is in the name of the Lord, our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Join me, everyone. Let's praise the Lord together. The psalmist says, let's make him famous. Let's make him, let's make his name glorious to all. Verse 4, this is going to be your testimony this month. Your testimony will be that the Lord God will answer you the Lord God will free you from any form of fear, any form of thing that is holding you back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 says, listen to my testimony. I cried to God in my distress and he answered me and he freed me from all my fears. So in this verse 4, the prayer I want you to pray is like an affirmation. It's begin, you, I want you to begin to say, God has given me the spirit of love, boldness, and a sound mind. In this month of November, I decree and I declare that God has given me the spirit of love, the spirit of boldness, the spirit of a sound mind. This month of November, in the name of Jesus Christ, I affirm by faith that God has given to me the spirit of love, the spirit of boldness, and a sound mind. What you're praying here now, you are declaring what God has done for you. The fear is not your future. Fear is not your future. Fear is not your future. You are a child of God. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he has given you the spirit of love, boldness, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 5 says, gaze upon him, join your life it is, and joy will come. Your faces will bless him with glory. You will never wear that shame face again. This prayer point here is to say, Father Lord, in this month of November, help me to focus my attention on you. I want, you, I want to say that again. Help me, Lord, to focus my attention on you. Help me, Almighty God, in my waking moment, in my sleeping moment, in Almighty God, whether it is in the day or in the night, let me, Almighty God, help me, Father, that will put my attention and my focus, my expectation on you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that those who trust in the Lord shall not be put to shame. Lord, therefore, I thank you, Almighty God, that my face, Lord, my face, rather, we glisten because of your goodness. Help me to lift up my eyes, Almighty God, and focus my attention on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. You know, there's a story that you're familiar with. is a story of Peter when he walked on water. The Bible said there was a, a boisterous wind beating against the ship. And eventually, everybody was afraid. The Bible says they saw Jesus walking on the on the on the sea, and Peter said, "Lord, if it is you, bid me to come." And the Lord said to Peter, "Yes, come." And therefore, Peter took one leg off and took the other out of the boat, and he began to walk. He was the only one recorded in the history of the Bible that walked on water. He began to walk on water. He was doing quite all right, but the Bible said he looked at the boisterous wind. The moment he looked at the boisterous wind, he shifted his attention away from Jesus. And then the Bible said he began to sink. So what can we learn from that? What we pay attention to, we grow in our lives. So that's why I want to pray that prayer again to say, Lord, in this month of November, help me to keep my attention on the goodness of God, on the wonder of Jesus. Help me to keep my attention, oh Lord, on the faithfulness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. I may not understand what is going on, but Lord, help me, Lord. I receive help from you, Lord, that I will pay attention. I will shift my attention only and put my attention only on the finished work of Jesus Christ. I'll put my attention only on what Christ has done. I receive help from you almighty god thank you for helping me lord i give you praise in the name of jesus the bible here says when you gaze upon him 
and you join your life with his, you embrace your identity in Jesus. The Bible says joy will come and your face will glisten with glory. You will never wear that shame face again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over your life that everything that brings shame, everything that brings ignominy will not be found in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, that your face will glisten with the glory of God. Your face will glisten with the beauty of God. Your life will glisten with the wonder of God. In the name of Jesus Praise God forevermore. Verse 6, Bible says, When I had nothing, desperate and defeated, I cried out to the Lord, and he heard me, bringing his miracle deliverance when I needed it most. <laughs> Begin to say, Father, this month of November, I walk in the miracle deliverance of the Lord. <laughs> say it again. I walk in the miracle deliverance of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to explain that prayer again so that we can all understand it. You see, at times, we look a life from the spectacular. We say, oh, yes, God has delivered me, has done these big, big, these big great things for me. But do you know, if you drove to work and come back, God has delivered you. Do you know if you woke up yesterday and you and you sorry, you slept yesterday and you woke up the next day, do you know that God has delivered you? Do you know that deliverance of God is not just about the big ticket things, but, but even those things that we're not paying attention to. Your son or your daughter goes out of your house and comes back safely. That is the deliverance of God. People might be in your office. They might be, they might be going through challenges and issues left, right, and center, but God kept you in the bubble. That is a deliverance of God. I want you to pray again to say, Father, in, in this month of November, I will experience the miraculous deliverance of God in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let's pray that prayer again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you in advance that I will experience the miraculous deliverance of the Lord in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I pray again. I make my declaration tonight among the coming of friends, among friends and family, among brothers and sisters, and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, help me to experience your miraculous deliverance, even this month in the name of Jesus Christ, in every area of my life. I believe it and I receive it. I walk in that consciousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 7, the Bible says, the angel of Yahweh stood down to listen as I prayed, and secondly, empowering me and showing me how to escape. Now, he will do this for everyone who fears God. What God is communicating to you tonight and communicating to me this evening is this one truth, that God is always with us, that God is always for us, that God is always in us, that no weapon formed against us shall ever prosper, that even when we can't feel his presence, God has never left. God is always 100% with us. The Bible here says that the person stood down to pray. The angel of the Lord began to listen, began to listen as the prayer was going on. And what was he doing? He was encircling, he was empowering, and he was showing how to escape. You know, there's a story about Jesus in the garden when he was there and he was praying. The Bible says the angel of the Lord came to minister to him when he was just about to be offered up at Calvary's hill. And he went into the garden, he began to pray. The Bible says sweat were coming out of his pores like blood. And he was praying. The Bible says the angel of God came to minister to him. You know, yes, also when Jesus Christ faced the temptation in the wilderness, the Bible says he was hungry for, he was he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the enemy came to tempt him. When he overcame that temptation, made angels also came to do what? To minister to him. Why do they need to minister to Jesus? They came to encourage him. They came to remind him of the word of the Father. Remember, Christ came into this earth as a son of man, as a son of God, which means he, the challenges he faced, you are also facing some of the challenges as well. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that whatever you are going through, Christ has gone through it before. And he understood what you, what you are going through. He understood the pain you are going through. He understood understood some of the challenges you might be going through. So right now, when you when we say the angel of the Lord stooped down 
and began to listen to your prayer and began to encircle you and began to empower you and began to show you how to escape. It's a powerful prayer that you can say, that, Lord, in this November, Lord, I will experience the goodness of God like I've never experienced before. In this November, Father, I thank you, Almighty God, that a way of escape is made available for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I receive Almighty God breakthrough in this November, breakthrough in this November in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, O God, for your angels that you have surrounded me with. Thank you for your angels that you have surrounded me with. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you, Almighty, for the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you, O God. Father, we give you praise. Lord, this month, O Lord, we shall experience the ministration of angels in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Verse 8 says, drink deeply of the pleasure of this God. Experience for yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all who turn to hide themselves in him. The Bible essentially says, God is a merciful God. God is a merciful God. There is what we call joyous mercies of the Lord that he gives to those who turn to hide themselves in him. The Bible says, the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous walk to him. That's it. The Lord is a strong tower, but we run to him so that we can experience his salvation. This God, I pray for you. And I pray for myself that this month we shall experience the joyous mercies of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This month we shall experience the pleasure of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. This month we shall drink deeply of the pleasure of this our wonderful Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, Almighty God, that in this month of November, every one of us, oh Lord, we experience will experience the joyous mercies of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every one of us, Lord, will drink deeply of the pleasures of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, O Lord, from the oldest to the youngest. This is going to be a month of manifestation, a month of the experience of God in a new dimension in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you praise. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Verse 9 says, worship in awe and wonder, all, who, all you who have been made holy, for all who fear him will feast with plenty. Notice the words used here. He says, you will feast with plenty. You will feast with plenty. You will feast with plenty. This is a word that is talking of abundance. This is a word that is talking of more than enough. This is a word that is speaking of the goodness of God. In the KJV that I've got in front of me, the Bible here says, Oh, fear the Lord, you is saints, for there's no want to them that fear him. There's no want to them that fear him. Now, you see, in the TPT, it seems to be alluding to just feast with plenty. Maybe it's talking about food, but if you look in verse 9, it's talking about all kind of wants. Is there anything, any want in your life? The Bible says there is no want. There's no want. It says there's, there's no lack, right, to them that fear him. This month, we shall walk in the prosperity of God. This month, we shall walk in the abundance of God. This month, we shall walk in the consciousness of the goodness of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for everyone who fears God, the Bible says, there cannot be any want in their lives. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we eject any form of want, any thought process of lack. We refuse to embrace such in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your victory. We thank you for your mercies. And we thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now, verse 10 is a wonderful portion of scripture. This is one of the scriptures that God has used to bless me. So I'll tell you a small story here. The Bible here says, even the strong and the wealthy will grow weak and hungry. But those who passionately pursue the Lord will never lack any good thing. We never lack any good thing. We never lack any good. I want to, you to allow that to sink into your heart. You will never lack any good thing. In KJV, it says, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. 
So I had an experience many years ago. I think it was 2018 or thereabout. Family was based in Nigeria then, and uh, we they were staying in a place that was far from from this my children's school. So they had to they had to leave house in the morning, be around five thirty or six o'clock in the morning. So it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't good because it wasn't I mean, they were not used to it. And then my wife called me one day and said, well, "Look, we need to find a house." So they've been looking, they've been going around to find a house they couldn't get. And then she told me, "I said, well, if you don't get a house by Monday, we will have to consider coming back to to the UK." And then I went for prayers on Saturday morning. And one of our brothers, Brother Michael, started raising prayer point, and he raised, he, he, he spoke at this scripture, Psalm 34, verse 10. He spoke and said, The young, young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. At this point in time, I need to raise some money to rent a house in a, another part of town that is closer to their school. You know, I need to raise money. And um, I wasn't sure where I was going to raise that money, but she told me, "Look, if you don't, if you don't get sort out of this house thing, we, we're probably going to have to think about coming back to Nigeria." So when this scripture was shared to me, it was shared in the prayer meeting. I I went into a trance, and in that trance, I saw in my mind's eye this young, mighty, ferocious lion that was so uh, lanky and strong, you know, and the lions kind of wander into uh into an opening you know in the in the forest and the lion was ferocious it was it it looks well fed you know so the lion began to roar and roar and god was showing me that picture the, the, the picture of somebody who is strong and has all the power but in the night god showed me another picture while i was looking it was evening time <laughs> this lion now had his, his stomach kind of like, um, you know, emaciated. It looks so emaciated in the evening time. And I was like, ah, what's going on here? This lion that I saw in the morning that was that looks that looks well fed, how come he looks emaciated now? And the Lord gave me an, an analogy. There are times, you know, when we, not even at times, when we believe, when we trust, when we put our effort in the, in the, in human effort. I say, oh, it's everything that I'm doing that's going to make it happen. It's everything that I'm going to do that's going to make it happen. Because you are missing the point about the God factor. And God said, somebody who is strong, who is powerful, can go hungry still. But those who trust in the Lord shall not lack any good thing. As I began to ponder on that, this scripture ministered to me and enlarged my heart while sitting in the place of prayer. The next day, or I think it was a Monday, I just spoke with my broker and we I just walked through some things in my uh, from my property and I was able to take some money. And the guy said, they will never give you money. I said, just try it out. And we got the money out in 24 hours and I was able to do what I had to do, uh, you know, with meet the need at that point in time. So, and that proves to me that God meets our needs. You no, know, so God says to you, say, the strong and the wealthy may grow weak, they will grow weak and they will get go, go hungry. If somebody here is somebody that you say, Oh, this person is wealthy, is strong, God said they're able to grow weak and go hungry. But if you trust in the Lord, you will never lack any good thing. So in this month of November. I wanted to begin to say, Father, I thank you. This is the month, this is my month of overabundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is my this is my month of overabundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I put my trust in you. My heart is resolute on trusting you. Therefore, I thank you that this is my month of overabundance, overabundance in every area of my life. In every area of my life, I receive the abundance of God. I receive the impartation of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Verse 11, do I have to come, children of God, and listen to me. I will share the lessons I have learned of fearing the Lord. What is this lesson? Now, please pay attention to this, the next couple of verses. As, that's probably why I'm going to stop and I will switch into the communion service, the communion itself. Now, verse 11 to 13 is very important. In this month, God is giving you a clue. God, our deliverer, is for you. God, our deliverer, is with you. God, our deliverer, is in you. God is not outside of you. He lives on the inside of you. The Bible says the kingdom is within you. But now look at verse 11. It says, come, children of God, listen to me. I will share the lesson I have learned of fearing the Lord. What is that lesson? This is the lesson. Do you want to live a long, good life? Do you want to enjoy the beauty that fills each day? Then never speak a lie 
or allow wicked words to come from your mouth. God essentially is, is comparing in this text the fear of the Lord to the words that we speak. Essentially he's saying the words that we speak should be words of life. Because when we speak words of life, it's a sign that we are fearing the Lord. And it says, when you speak words of life, what's that promotes life? What's that promotes life? What's that build life? Say, you are going to live a good, long life. And when you live a good, long life, it's a sign of the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is what I want you to do in this text. If you are, if you are, if you are in a place where you can do this, you can just put your hands on your mouth and say, Father, in this month of November, I will only speak words of life. I will only speak words that build up. I will only speak words that promote life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask for your help that in this month of November, I will only speak words that promote life, words that build life, words that add to life, words that build other people up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for your help, you Lord, in the name of Jesus, that in this month of November, my mouth will speak only words that produce life, words that build life, life was the heart to life in the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping me. Lord, I give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No, you, I know what that, why this is important. When we talk about the words that produce life, words that build life, we're not just talking about the words that come out of your mouth. Also, the words that you say to yourself. So this month, you will learn to speak only good things about yourself. You will learn to stand in the front of the mirror and say, I love you. You call your name by that. You say, I love you. You are a wonderful child of God. Things are happening for you. You learn to speak over your own self. It's very important. It's very important. It's, look, if you don't, uh, if you're not your own personal cheerleader, who is going to cheer you up? But God himself is cheering you up. And he's saying, you want to use your mouth well? Begin to say only good things about yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Now, for those of you, if you like to continue this prayer, if you can join us on Saturday morning, Saturday morning um, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I, I'm running through the, this whole prayer for the whole of the month of, of November in the morning, 6 to 7. That's when we do the prayer. So we're going to be covering that at that point in time. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's go to First Corinthians chapter 11. Now it is time for the communion it's, itself. We thank God for the gift of life. God has been awesome. God has been beautiful. God has helped us so, so much. God has been our, our, our cheerleader. God has been such a wonderful father. And I just want to thank God that he has brought us thus far from a mighty long way. You know, when we started this year, God promised us this is the year of stability and prosperity. And we just want to thank God for many testimonies that have come through those who have received healing, those who God has established, those people that God has promoted just like that. We just want to thank God for that. We you know, so as we round up this year, we have got two more uh, communion to do. This is the penultimate one, but I wanted you to know God, our deliverer, is still going to come through for you. You know, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'll start from verse 23. Apostle Paul says, in the, I'm, I'm reading the passage because it's on the screen, but I've got the KJV here on my, on my Bible here. He says, I have added down to you what came to me by direct revelation from the Lord himself. The same night in which he was handed over, he took bread, he took bread, and he gave thanks. Then he distributed it to the disciples and said, take it and eat your fear. It is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. The body was given. In the KJV, it says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. His body was broken so that yours do not, yours does not have to ever experience brokenness. Oh yes, the body of Christ was broken, so that yours does not have to ever 
experience brokenness. So in the name that guarantees an answer, I speak to somebody's mind tonight that if you have ever experienced brokenness in your mind or in any part of your body, that the healing power of the God who delivers is at work right now as you partake of this communion to rejig your life, to change direction, to make things work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children and I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost that as we partake of this communion, Lord, we receive resuscitation, we receive restoration, we receive recreation, we receive rebuilding, all marigo of our vessels of our veins, of our body parts, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every part of our bodies that require a touch of God, that they will get a touch of God right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for complete awesome healing over your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the power of the resurrection that is at work right now, touching lives in Jesus' name. I thank you for organs that are not being reshaped by the Holy Ghost. I thank you for organs that are not being touched by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your mercies and grace and goodness. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. As we partake of this bread now, we remember that this is the body of Jesus that was broken for us. Therefore, we receive this now in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. You can take the bread. Hallelujah. 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 In verse 25, the Bible says, He did the same with a cup of wine. After supper and said, This cup seals the new covenant with my blood. Drink it. And whenever you drink this, do this to remember me. In the KJV, he says, After this same manner, he took the cup. When he had so be saying, he said, This cup is a new covenant, New Testament, in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. So when we partake of the blood of Jesus, we are reminding ourselves that we belong under the new covenant. Oh, I wish I had time. I wish I One of these days I'm going to talk about 12 things that we have as part of the new covenant. 12 benefits that God has given us in the new covenant. We are under the new covenant. We are not under the old covenant. We are not the, under a mismatch covenant. You know, like, let's let's add this on to this one. No. God did away with that old covenant entirely and replaced it with a new covenant. So, Jesus Christ is saying, every time you take this blood, the blood of the covenant, you are remembering that you are under the new covenant. And that under the new covenant, you are no longer a servant, <laughs> but you are a child of God. You know, in a household, a servant does not know what the master does. But a son, a son does. A daughter does. You are no longer servants, but children of God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we partake of this wine now. And we receive the benefits of sonship. The benefits of daughtership. The benefits of knowing that we are the children of God. We are not helpless. We are no helpless people. <laughs> we are no helpless people. We are no vagabonds. We are children of God. We are heads of the world. The earth belongs to our Father. And if it belongs to God, it belongs to us. Lord, we thank you, oh Lord, that the resources of this earth, Lord, is for us to enjoy, is for us to use to bring glory to God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we are not outsiders looking in. We belong in the household of God. Thank you for making us your children. Thank you for giving us the, the authority of children. Thank you for giving us the privileges of children. Lord, we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We remember what Christ has done for us, that by his stripes we have been healed. Lord, now we speak to every sickness that the blood of Jesus con con makes healing to manifest in you in the name of Jesus. We send away heavy ailments right now in the name of Jesus. We declare by the unction of the Holy Ghost that wholesomeness of God, 
is resting upon every organ in the name of Jesus. We declare over every child present here tonight in the name of Jesus that the wisdom of God is at work in you. In the name of Jesus, you will know what to do. You will be at the right place at the right time. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the kingdom of God belongs to you, that you will reap the benefit of the kingdom in your life. The Bible says Christ came to give us life and that life in abundance. I speak abundant life of God over your life in the name of Jesus. Father, right now we take partake of this blood and we'll remember, Lord, what you have done. We'll receive this now with thanksgiving. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You can partake of the wine. Lema Santa Libra Cada Hinde Lady Boso to Lolibra Hinda La Moson to Lolibra Cada Hinde Le Moson Daladia. Father, we thank you because you are faithful, wonderful, and kind. Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 17, the Bible says, The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Now, the, 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 the tense used here is a, is, a, is a present continuous. The Lord delivers. The Lord delivers. If you go to verse 6, the Bible said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. So one is past tense. The Lord saved the poor man. But the righteous person, the Lord saves, the Lord hears, the Lord delivers at them out of all their troubles. Whatever trouble may, they may be, the Bible says, God delivers, continues from all of these troubles in the name of Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. So now I'll just say some words of prayer over the next couple of minutes before we go. And I'll just speak from my heart as God lays in my heart to pray for you. I release the blessing of God unto you now in this month of November in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I pray for your children. And I pray for myself. I pray, Almighty God, that this month <laughs> would be the best month yet in this year. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this month will be uh, the culmination of efforts <laughs> that have been expended from January to, 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 to this time. That you cause an amalg amalgamation, almighty God, of the blessing to rest upon your children in Jesus' name. Lord, I decree, Lord, that our going out is protected and preserved by the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Almighty God, O oh Lord, that while we are asleep, Lord, we know that we are protected. While we are awake, Lord, we know that we are protected. Lord, this month, Lord, help us to carry the consciousness of the very presence of God in all our dealings, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, Almighty God, for our children, wherever they may be on God's, on God's earth. Lord, I pray for protection over them, that they will protect it, Almighty God, from the plans of the enemy. They will protect it, Almighty God, when they are in school and when they are at home. Lord, that every plan of the enemy over their lives is thwarted in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for these children, Lord, that they will lift the banner up all on high. They will not be confused or, or distracted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Almighty God, that you grant them boldness, boldness of mind to be able to stand true to what they believe in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they will not fall prey to the whims and caprices of men in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for our children, Almighty God, that grace shall be their hand. In Jesus' name. I pray for those who are in secondary school, those who are in university, that their academics will go better. They will get good grace and wonderful grace. That, Lord, you will pass unto them the spirit of excellence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. They will know more than they are even taught in class in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for those almighty God who are already working among our children. That, almighty God, you preserve and protect them, almighty God, from unreasonable men in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That these ones are preserved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray that you showcase their talents, Father, even among their peers in Jesus' name. I pray that you impact unto them the gift, O Lord, that no one can counter in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks about Daniel, that they could not fault him. He had such an excellence that they could not fault him in what he was doing. Lord, I pray 
for us as a group, Lord Almighty God, that will step into the, into, into the place of excellence in what we do, in how we do what we do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us to be diligent in the work you have committed into our hands. Help us, Almighty God, to stay focused in what you have delivered into our hands. In this month of November, we come against every form of distraction that Lord Almighty will be laser focused on what you've called us to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We receive help in the morning. We receive help in the afternoon. We receive help in the evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the blessing of the morning, the blessing of the dew of heaven. Rest upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Almighty God, that nature is working in our favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the trees, Almighty God, we walk in our favor. The winds that blow, we walk in our favor. Everywhere we go, we walk in our favor. The grounds on which we walk, we walk in our favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that we are the favored of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I now lay the acts of your word against every tree that you have not planted in our lives, every relationship that you have not ordained. We cut off today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that we shall walk in the knowledge of God, in the goodness of God, in the awareness of the blessing of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter that we are called unto the blessing so that we can be a blessing to other people. Lord, I pray for your children, every one of us here and those who are going to listen to this replay later, that we shall begin to carry the consciousness of the blessed child of God that we are, of the blessed children of God that we are in the name of Jesus that when we go to work we carry a consciousness that God shows up there that when we are at work, we carry a consciousness that God shows up there. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, help us all, mighty God, to be solution providers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We are people born of his grace, born of his love, covered by his blood. And that is uh, the consciousness that we are going to carry this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your beauty. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for being our own dear Father. All is well with us. All is well with us. All is well with us and what is ours in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Say with me, I am at the right place. I am at the right place. At the right time. At the right time. Doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. With the right people. With the right, the people. right people. Producing amazing results. Producing amazing results. Because the Spirit of the Lord leads me in the name. Because the Spirit of the Lord leads me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Holy All the days of our lives. And we dwell, and we dwell in the house of the, of the Lord, Lord forever, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So be expectant, be expectant, be expectant, be expectant, be expectant, be expectant in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well. You are blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.